excited about with the AMG brand. And uh, we've done so much, and, and, and I'm glad, Rob, I'm glad you mentioned that, because uh, a special thanks to Rob. He was actually uh, part of the team when we first put these uh, sport models on the map, and nothing pleases us more to actually be here with you today and, and, and be uh, ringing these things out uh, over the next few hours. So I think you'll have a lot of fun for sure. Now, uh, just a little bit, obviously the AMG brand in, in, in the U.S. specifically has been extremely successful, and that's shepherding and a lot of, lot of work on our part, and obviously a great response from the U.S. market. In the last three years, we're up 70% in terms of AMG's pure volume, and as Steve mentioned, for the year, we're up about 30%. Now, contributing to that is the launch of our all-new sport models. We're really excited. We launched each of these two cars about five weeks ago. We sold about 1,200 units already. Um, so we see that the response and that there is clearly a market for these types of cars and supporting us to continue that growth uh, and continue as the largest market for AMG vehicles in the world. Currently, we're the largest market by almost two and a half times. So clearly, the market likes what they see, especially in the U.S. So that's something we look to continue, and it's products like we're launching today that we really feel like give us that tailwind. So. What's this look like in terms of the strategy behind what an AMG Sport model is? So where we were positioned is kind of what you see with the pyramid on the left. We saw that you had Mercedes-Benz models, and then you had AMG what we call performance models, the C63, E63, or the GT, all those cars positioned at the top. But we saw a clear position in between, and that's what we see exemplified on the right side. It's really a clear position where there's room in the market for people looking for a performance-oriented car but at a different price class. And again, we saw a lot of people that were very much into the AMG brand, big fans of the AMG brand, but just the current cars were a little bit out of reach in terms of budget. And so we looked at, uh, and obviously competitors are there too, so we saw a great opportunity. And, and what this would look like is we can position these cars. We start with the Mercedes-Benz model on the left. You then might have a Mercedes, let's say a C300 in this example, with a sport package, and that's a body kit basically. But then the sport model, this is something because there's a clear open position in between where, let's say in this example, a C63 would be. <coughs> so from a price positioning, just to put all these relevant, so this is about a thirty-eight dollars to $42,000 class, and here's between sixty and 70000 So we see a great position for a car like the, C Sports, uh, the C450 Sport that, uh, that we have here. Same story with the GLE, there's that price, price position where there's someone looking for performance, but it's just a different position from a price class. So we see a great opportunity there. So we developed really what we consider a formula for success on these cars, and that's what you see here. It's, we start with the top Mercedes-Benz model, and in this case, it's the top Mercedes-Benz engine, six-cylinder, bi-turbo engine. We then bring in, obviously, the fun parts that Rob mentioned. So we're able to pull from the toolkit from AMG. And both of these cars really benefit greatly from, let's call it the DNA from their big brother models, the C63 and a GLE 63. So many of the technical bits and the design bits on these cars are derived from those cars. So we really are able to come up with a great, just a great formula for success. You've had a chance to drive them briefly, but you'll, uh, but you'll get that experience this afternoon. So that's really the formula. Um, but of course, anytime you're talking about an AMG, you're gonna start with powertrain. And uh, it's all about, we start with the engine. So obviously in this car, it's great. We start with a three liter bi-turbo engine that we take over from the Mercedes-Benz family. And we boost that to 362 horsepower <coughs> and 384 pound-feet of torque. Now, again, power isn't the only measure of these cars, but it's one of the more important things because obviously with an AMG car, you gotta have a potent power plant. And one of the things we really like with this car, knowing that we're not the first to the fray here, this is something where competitors are living already, but to have benchmark performance from your engine right out of the gate is something we really feel strong about because we knew we had to step up. If you're presenting the AMG brand, you need to present it in a benchmark fashion. So obviously, engine, transmission, so next step up. So we actually have two different transmissions in the cars you'll drive today. In the C-Class, we have the seven speed, and in the, in the GLE, we have our new nine speed. Now, each of these transmissions, again, has been taken over from Mercedes-Benz and redeveloped for these applications. So quicker shifting, rev matching on the downshifting, a much more, let's say, direct linkage between you and the drivetrain. Uh, and you'll notice that in every drive mode. You can drive these in comfort mode, and they're already significantly far further along and significantly more direct than the Mercedes-Benz counterparts. So engine, transmission, and then the, the drivetrain itself. So 
Our formatic all-wheel drive system is something that's part of each of these systems, and it's something that's really we've seen with the application of formatic and AMG has really boosted our sales in the last three to four years. This is something that we see helping because there's parts of the country that, that four-wheel drive is just a requirement. Coupling that with obviously the performance of the engines that we have now, four-wheel drive is almost a requirement to put that kind of power down. So it's really a great thing that we see apply here. And what we did also, we didn't just take over the formatic system from Mercedes-Benz because the, what we wanted was, was a more performance-oriented, rear-wheel drive, biased four-wheel drive system. So we actually took over the system that we use in the E-Class and the CLS, which has the torque split. It's 33% in the front and 67% in the rear. That contrasts with a normal Mercedes-Benz, which is a 45-55 torque split. So you see just the dedicated AMG version of formatic is what we use on these cars. So taking that obviously further, the, 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 the steering, the suspension, the braking, all of these have been upgraded, and again, taking advantage of the DNA from their big brother AMG models. So we have two different systems. So the suspension on the, C, on the C450 is derived from the C63. That's the mag, uh, magnetic suspension or the magnetorheological fluid. So that's the system that we have in the C63. We have a derivative of that in the C450. On the GLE 450, we actually use a performance aromatic suspension, which is derived from the GLE 63. So you'll have a chance to play around with that. You'll see the different systems in play. Uh, we also have a two-stage steering system. So uh, it's a variable ratio, two different ratios, depending upon how you select the, the different uh, uh, settings and, and also uh, different uh, effort. So you'll feel that just from comfort mode up to sport mode, you'll feel the differences there. Also upgraded braking systems. So all of these things, basically all of the things that have been touched, so to speak, by AMG to make a true performance model, let's say a C63, have also been touched in our 450 Sport models. So you'll see that really throughout the cabin. So those are just some of the examples there. <coughs> One of the things I really want to call your attention to, though, is the ability to dynamically program the car for your liking. So you probably saw this already, but just to the left, of the, of the command controller, you'll see the dynamic select button. So I encourage you, obviously, we're on amazing <coughs> roads here, so take advantage of that because it really does allow you to kind of tailor the personality of the vehicle for the drive that you want. So you start, obviously, at comfort, you dial up to sport, and sport plus. So those are probably the three that you'll live in most of the time. You'll feel the whole car get sharper. That's throttle response, transmission response. It'll affect the exhaust sound as you dial e each of those up as well as the steering response. So I encourage you to make sure that you, you uh, play around with the knob just to the left of the command controller. I'm guessing most of this crowd is a Sport Plus kind of crowd, uh, which I think you're in the right place for that. So uh, I would encourage you to definitely take advantage of that and you'll feel just the differences in the setup. You'll also notice a dedicated M mode. So that's something that's typically with the AMG models. So you can actually lock in the shifting. It won't shift automatically. So, and, and the paddles are right there for you to do all the work if you'd like to. So. Really a great setup for that. And finally, design. Uh, you can't have an AMG car without the typical design cues of what makes a performance car. And you're gonna see these both inside and out. Uh, on the outside, you're gonna see very aggressive body styling, front and rear bumpers. You're also gonna notice the wheels. So we start at 18 and 19 inch wheels on the C-Class, and we start at 21 inches on the GLE and go up to 22. So you'll see a number of different wheel designs. We have a, a beautiful, I'm looking at a beautiful rainbow of cars out there that really show uh, just what you can do with these design-wise. But you're going to see all those, let's say, uh, kind of race-derived bits on the outside, and then that carries over also to the inside. When you get in the car, you'll notice sports seats, you'll notice the red contrast <coughs> stitching, red seat belts in some of the cars, a very performance-oriented steering wheel, flat bottom, shift paddles, a lot of things inside the car that remind you that you're in a car that's really a very performance-oriented machine and, and really support you in the kind of driving that you want to do. So. All of those kind of things uh, are just really indicative of what an AMG car is all about from a design perspective. So if you, if you sum all these things up, one, one of the things as we've had a chance to drive the cars, we realize these cars are a lot more than just two plus two equals four. It's the sum of the parts plus the knowledge that we have from AMG. It's really almost two plus two equals five. And you realize that when you drive the cars and how well, to, the, the, how the well sorted they are and uh, how great they feel uh, out on the road. So uh, with that, uh, obviously, uh, pricing is a, is a great, is a factor we're, uh, we're always interested in, and uh, it's something we're really excited about. With the GLE 450, we enter the fray with a very aggressive price class and uh, going head-to-head -head with the competition at 65100 
and with the C450 going head to head with everything else out there at 50,800. So great pricing on these cars, something very compelling. And uh, again, putting AMG, bringing AMG to people we never would have reached before uh, is probably the most exciting part of that. People that have been fans a long time now have an opportunity to be part of the AMG family.